All right, and welcome back to Politics Unplugged. And we continue our conversation here with Wes Gullah, Patina, and I have a close personal friends, uh, colleagues, uh, you know, uh, uh, with, with Senator John McCain. And i got to start with you, Wes. I mean, talk to us. Just share us a moment, you know, on the campaign trail or otherwise where, where uh, Senator McCain displayed some of that famous uh, humor that he's known for. Well, in 1986, I heard him say, um, as Chairman Mao says, it's always darkest before it's totally black. <laughs> I heard that 175,000 times in the in the next 30 years. And that so, was not the and only. That yeah. was yeah. yeah. And that was not the only joke no. he would tell Mo over and over well, again. Okay. Most of the jokes funny, were always though. yeah. It was and always they, funny. He'd tell the same joke at every stop, and I always laughed because they were funny. Yeah. It, did he ever think some of those jokes were really old? It, you know, you would be covering that, and you would see yeah. people's eyes were always like because he would always tell that story about how he, people would ask him how he how he was after the, he lost the election. He would say, "Well, I slept like a baby, you know, two hours, and I wake up cry. and cry." And he would tell that at every stop, and he would see people's eyes glaze over. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the equivalent. A, he was a relator. He just related to people, and they were kind of like dad jokes. It was corny, but it made you laugh every time because it was warm, it was collegial. I come from a small um, prison town, and he used the work release, and he used it on several staffers. Like, oh, Bettina, welcome, meet her. She's on our work release program and was just released from prison. How many times have you heard that one? But it was funny every time. It was the way of just breaking the ice mm -hmm. and letting people know that he was approachable and that they could talk to him. But it could get him in trouble, though, didn't it, a couple times there, Wes? I mean, you know, bomb, 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 Iran, that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, on occasion, <laughs> it would get him in trouble. I remember one um, Marine Corps uh, veteran who uh, didn't appreciate the idea that he, when he said the joke about being, he wanted to go into the Marine Corps or the, the Navy, but his parents were married, so he had to go into the Navy. That, <laughs> that joke that. offended uh, a couple of Marine Corps guys that took um, it But then he always owned it. He yeah. owned it. And if yeah. he knew that, you know, again, he was just trying to relate and break the ice. Mm -hmm. If he knew he offended somebody, then he would own it and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend. But yeah. he was one of the funniest people so that I've ever known. Yeah, you know, and I always looked at him as just an observer, uh, you know, of, 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 McC of McCain. It's uh, like this was a, a disarming mechanism because right. I think, uh, you know, as he progressed in politics, he became very well aware of his stature. And you could see people in awe of him. They would meet them, and he would, you know, say something self-deprecating, and he would automatically, put, everybody would put their defenses down, and he could kind of start relating. That's right. right. That's yeah. exactly right. And But it was because he was so smart, too. Smart people are funny, and um, <laughs> he, and he was very, very smart. He was one of the smartest people I ever met, and um, incredibly well read. And and that's where the humor came from too, because he could r relate to stories in history and bring them out and make a joke about. It.